All right, you guys, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we're doing a fig review. This variety here we're looking at today is called Regatta Rosa A. There's a Regatta Rosa A and there's a Regatta Rosa B. They're Italian varieties. I don't entirely know where they come from or who they come from. I do know that my friend Wills down in Florida has these varieties. And I would argue it's an extremely productive tree. Um, here is actually a one gallon size tree of it that I rooted last year. So this is an interesting uh, little comparison here is that this is the same variety, the same tree, rooted at the same exact time. I kept it in that one gallon size pot. And then this one here, instead of keeping it in a one gallon size pot, I put it into a five gallon and you can see it's pretty much all the way at my chest. And by the way, it's been covered in fruit. I've already harvested quite a bit off uh, of this particular tree. It did get a greenhouse head start, but I imagine it's probably gonna ripen sometime around now, sometime in September without a head start. And you can see on this young tree here, I mean, look how many fruits are on this, this thing, even in this small pot, and there's only three leaves on it. So it's an extremely productive, I would say. It doesn't require a lot of light to set the fruits. So it is adapted more along the lines to, I would say, climates that are just not as long. And again, even without a head start, I think this would probably be a mid-season a mid fig. It wouldn't ripen too late. Um, the problem with it though, is that you could see down here at the bottom is it splits. And it splits almost every time, it seems like. Uh, I don't really have, I think, the climate for this fig. What I've been trying to do is wait for an opportunity to film this variety and it would, you know, get a fruit that wouldn't split and that was actually kind of ripe. I don't like doing these fig reviews, guys, on fruits that are just not ripe. It doesn't really help. A lot of people do this. Uh, they have very young trees and, um, the fruits are not really representative of what the variety should be. And also they usually, you know, show you guys fruits that just honestly are not ripe. And I don't get it why you would, why I would even taste this fruit and then describe the fruit to you. It just, this is not really what it's going to taste like. I mean, it's just pretty resinous. Um, you know, the flavors are just not there. The sugar content's not there. I mean, it's just everything about it just seems like misleading. And these people who are making these videos just don't know that they're being misleading. So it's not really their fault, but you know, and even just in general with my videos and you, you know, you look at the taste or I'm describing the taste to you guys and I'm talking about the, the trees and the characteristics and things, you just gotta take all that with a grain of salt, right? I mean, you just have to think about well, Ross is in a different climate. Um, you know, there's just a lot of it, unfortunately, that is subjective. And then it just, I think it's made worse by people who are, in my opinion, doing good work, but they're just not, they're not putting out videos or, that are really representative of this variety. The unfortunate part is that this variety is mature. It's ready to be putting out high quality fruit. In fact, I've gotten some that are okay, um, but it just, for my eyes, I don't think it's really gonna produce a high quality fruit this season. If it does, I'm gonna make another video and we'll talk about it. Uh, but for the most part, I think this is probably a very highly flavored fig. So this will be up there a lot with those people who go crazy for the figs that taste like Black Madeira, for the figs that are like, you know, Cavalieri as an example. Um, for things like, you know, Martinenka Ramada or Parajal Ramada. I think this one has got great flavor to it. At least the potential's there. Um, the only issue with it is, it, again, that it just splits like this almost every time. Um, and then therefore, because it splits like this, it's just not a fig I'm gonna grow in the future. Uh, so if it puts out a lot of fruits, like I said, maybe 50 fruits, out of those 50 fruits, I may only enjoy five of them um, and actually get to experience the full extent of its flavor and just how really good it is and experience that awesome experience like buying a nice bottle of wine and 
you know, experiencing that, that wine and, you know, everything that went into it and really trying to evaluate it. And it's, it's kind of like that with this particular fruit, but it's fleeting. It doesn't, it doesn't last very long. Whereas a fig like uh, Smith, you know, I've harvested every single fig off of that tree this year and enjoyed every single fig. Like there wasn't a single one for the most part. We even had a hurricane that came in here and we've had so much rain recently. It just doesn't matter. The thing puts out all these fruits. It doesn't split. It just performs so darn well. And then the fruits taste amazing. So why would I grow a fig like this? You know, that's, that's my opinion. Um, but some of you guys may just have that bug. Like here's another one up here, Paradiso Ciro. This is like the best fig I grow. It's like pretty much up there with the best tasting figs. Not the best fig I grow because it splits. In fact, today I had to take off two of them because they had split and they were fermenting and they were attracting fruit flies. And those flies, unfortunately, just make things a whole lot worse for a lot of my other trees. So this one here, is like that it's just that's where i would put it in this category of oh it could taste very good i'm sure it does taste very good you know it's very productive it has some pretty good qualities to it but unfortunately i'm not really going to be able to enjoy this fruit here uh for the reasons mentioned it just splits the fruit flies didn't get on it just yet but maybe if i waited another day if it rained again this would start to ferment a little bit and it'd be over for me. So, you know, and as I said, guys, I haven't really had one that's perfect, but even this underripe one, and even the ones that I've been eating that were a bit more ripe than this, you can tell they are, it's a very good fig. So anyone out there in California, this is a fig for you. Anyone out there in a dry place, this is a fig for you. It doesn't ripen too late, produces a lot of fruits, and I would argue this would be a very tasty fig that a lot of people would enjoy. Um, so I'm a big fan of it in terms of the flavor. It's a beautiful fig too. It's got some nice coloring to it. I imagine this would be stunning if ripened properly. Um, I would say this one's probably, like I said, it's right up there with like black Madeira. So you get it to ripen properly, you got a really highly tasting fig. I, even though it's just like, not ripe like this, you could see the potential. And I think that's, you know, I hope that's what people are not doing in these other videos is like tasting the fruit, really thinking of its potential rather than really what it is. Just looking at it very objectively of what it is. And uh, this is what it is, but obviously I see the potential. Um, so whatever, there it is. That's Regatta Rosa A. Well, again, very vigorous. I'm sorry, not very vigorous. Although it probably is got an average vigor. It sets well, it grows well, it's healthy. And even a friend of mine uh, who grows this in Florida actually says that the wood is variegated on it. So I, mine is not variegated. I'm not really sure what happened there or if his is even variegated. I have to contact him and find out if it, his still is, um, but yeah, mine is not pretty good fruit. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that subscribe button and check out our blog, figboss.com. We have so much fig-related information there. Would love to see you guys over there and uh, get notified for future blog posts. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care.